Spirit, who is all things to us, presence in which we live and move and breathe and have our being. What a gift to be here together, sharing our food, our spirit, ourselves. We ask no blessing upon our food, nor upon ourselves, because the blessing is always here if we but pay attention. As we light our chalice to begin our time together, what we do ask is for the courage and wisdom to be mindful of the great blessings. We ask, O oh, divine unity, that we remember to cherish our food, savouring the taste, the smells, the feel, the miracle of nourishment to our bodies, the gifts of our wonderful earth. We ask too that we remember to cherish each other, to taste and savour our relationships, to understand that what we know of the sacred we know through our bodies and through these connections of friendship and love. Grant us the wisdom to pay attention, grant us the generosity and the strength to open our hearts. So be it, blessed be, Amen. And an introduction. Uh, this is part of the Bake On initiative organised by Gavin Howell, who is the Unitarian Youth Programme Coordinator, among many other things. What an inclusive bunch. We welcome the many varied sweet and savoury mouthfuls which grace our palates and take great pleasure in the joy experienced in each bite. Some of you whip something together as an excuse to pop by and check in on a neighbour whilst others craft great signature bakes as expressions of love and gratitude to be enjoyed at church and family gatherings. Shamelessly, before sharing my wares, I portion off a very generous serving for myself to enjoy as a late morning treat. Though sometimes, if I'm honest, I also find the Spirit calls me to partake in a late afternoon treat as, as well. Who am I to question the will of the Divine? Of course, the eating is only a tiny, though incredibly satisfying, part of the whole experience. For me, when done well, from start to finish, the entire baking process is a deeply joyful one, as I savour the many different sensations which arise at each stage. My favourite being the moment I first catch a hint of that sweet scent emanating from the kitchen and the anticipation which follows. So there's quite a lot in this whole baking malarkey. It's quite an expansive ministry. The whole ritual from ingredient prep to tucking in provides deep nourishment to many and in different ways. And now our prayer. A traditional prayer to Saint Fenorius. Jesus Christ, the heavenly bread, bountiful provider of the everlasting food, giver of good things, who, through the prophet Elias, granted a source of uncultivated nourishment, the hope of the hopeless, the help of the helpless, and the saviour of souls. May you bless these gifts and those that offer them to you, to your glory and in honour of your servant Fenorius. Grant, O good one, to those who have prepared these cakes all your worldly and heavenly blessings. Make them to rejoice with gladness before your countenance. Show to them the ways to salvation. Hastily fulfil the petitions of their hearts and their every desire. Guide them into the fulfilling of their commandments, that forevermore in gladness and joy they may hymn and glorify your most honourable name by the prayers of the holy and glorious Saint Fenorius, the Wonder Worker. Amen. Amen. Uh, so thank you all for those of you who have shared your memories of cake and thank you especially to Hazel for sharing the wonderful photographs of your family's birthday cakes which are on the back of the order of service. Mm -hmm. uh, as Hazel has commented, now that the family has grown up and left home, I seldom bake cakes these days, conscious that we should be choosing healthier options for a snack. It's always good to have the occasional treat though, which we can do at the joiner's shop coffee shop in the village. Thinking about birthday cakes brings back many happy memories over the years for me. One of the earliest ones is the cake at a school friend's party, probably when we were about seven or eight years old. Marion has a May birthday and the cake was decorated with a maypole with coloured ribbons leading towards each guest and they all had little gifts attached to them. 
from Margaret Whitton. Being brought up when there was still rationing, we didn't eat a lot of cake, and so I don't really have a sweet tooth. The main cake I remember as a child was the Christmas cake, which in our house was a New Year cake. We did, though, have fruit pies, and one of my very favourite pies was a bilberry one, especially if we had picked them. My cousin Alan, who spent a lot of time with us and I, used to see who could get the most purple tongue. I enjoy a ginger cake or a fruit loaf. From Margaret Robinson. I have memories of first eating lemon and drizzle cake in the old school room of Stockton Unitarian Church. Also at various faith teas I have enjoyed scones made by Joan Unwin and lovely apple pies made by Jean Watson. From Margaret Kirk. Things I remember with special pleasure. The earliest was my mother allowing me to lick any mixture left in the bowl she'd been using. I think I enjoyed that more than the finished product. This is a common thing among bakers. I confess I did that myself, though you will I'm sure be relieved to learn that I did that after I had safely transferred all the batter I intended to bake into the tin. I enjoyed that more than the finished product, and my own children were allowed to do the same. But that was more difficult and would often lead to tears, because there were three of them and there had only been one of me. But the most recent memory was when I attended a meeting of a death cafe in Thirsk in the Friends Meeting House there. It had been set up to bring people together who might be dealing with bereavement or their own anxiety about dying, or even needing to better understand what options they had when arranging a funeral for a loved one. I went to three sessions. It was well attended and there was always cake. Being offered cake with tea or coffee created a warm sense of hospitality, a break from sharing often difficult stories. It really was part of the ministry that was being provided, and it always tasted good. From Jean Reeve, my mother, the joy of baking. To use a cliche, baking is my happy place. It's a time to relax and enjoy the choosing of a recipe, gathering the ingredients and then creating something that I hope will give as much pleasure to the people who eat it as I have had in baking it. There's much to be said for simply concentrating on one thing and enjoying the simplicity of weighing and measuring and mixing. My apron goes on at the beginning and comes off when the cake is out of the oven, warm and fragrant, and ready for the first slice. It's the joy of baking. She also adds, uh, this was in the email uh, she sent to me, baking is part of our lives and gives me so much pleasure. We're on our way to the village of Steventon, where my sister lives, that's my aunt, my aunt Frances, with a Swedish chocolate cake and my first attempt at a lemon drizzle cake. Well, it's your cousin Kate's birthday and you missed her last year. And now, from me. I just really like cake. Love it. <laughs> Partly because I, le I learned to bake at a young age with my oldest friend, Gemma. I still remember making butterfly buns, which mostly taught me that I really hate doing any sort of fiddly decorating. And if you've ever <coughs> eaten any of my cakes, you'll notice that if you're lucky, there might be some icing on the top, or maybe just a sprinkling of icing sugar. I will then I'll do that and then just call it quits. I cannot be bothered with fancy icing. <laughs> My favourite cakes are brownies and blondies, albeit in moderation. Why do Unitarians love cakes so much? We're famous for our after-service social time, we love it. Of course we're not alone in this. Other churches and religions do it, and the Newcastle Central Mosque is famous for its excellent cake selection on their open days. But it's noticeable that Unitarians across the country bring cookies, biscuits, cakes and nibbles. Sometimes purchased from Marks and Spencer, sometimes left over from Christmas, sometimes homemade, always welcome. That is, after all, why Gavin Howell suggested we should have a Bake On initiative. Of course, this could be because of what I always say is the Unitarian Holy Trinity, the coffee, the biscuit and the argument. <laughs> a group of people famous for being so highly individual, uh, many of us are one person awkward squad, uh, needs some hydration and nourishment if we're going to have a good argument with the worship leader, the person next to us, or just whoever has actually happened to turn up, about the service, the topic, the latest edition of Inquirer, 
or which way round you should put the milk in the tea. <laughs> I think that cake is the other side of Unitarianism. All these things I've just mentioned use our minds, our intellects, our rationality, even our fierceness. Yet we also have senses, bodies that need nourishment. We like to see, to touch, to smell and to taste, to use our senses as well as our minds. And we need to express our care for each other, as well as our urge to sharpen our minds. The bringing of food in the form of cake is a way in which we do this, a way in which we nurture and minister to each other. As I said above, my Unitarian baking has changed. I don't think I actually did mention that above, but nevertheless it has. At first I just brought a simple chocolate cake, or some cookies, <coughs> and everyone liked that, except for the people who couldn't eat gluten. So I began to bake gluten-free cakes, but it turned out there was also a need for vegan cakes. And some people couldn't have nuts, and others were on a sugar-free diet. Some people are vegetarian, even if they are not vegan, so I couldn't use gelatin in any decorating. And if they were vegan, that's no eggs or butter. So my favourite cake to make now is a vegan chocolate fudge cake, and should anyone want the recipe, let me know. It's dead simple, <laughs> it tastes great, you can make it with gluten-free flour, most of the ingredients can be readily bought at Morrison's, and everyone can eat it, uh, except for the people who are on a sugar-free diet, or who just plain don't like cake, they do exist. <laughs> There's probably a metaphor for our congregations in here somewhere, if I look hard enough. <laughs> Once we served up the same cake every Sunday, and people had to like it or go without, and for a while they did. Now, we have people of all different theological and spiritual outlooks. We are of different ages, genders, sexual orientations, financial backgrounds, ethnic origins, and disabilities. We need to have more than one kind of cake and think about how we can offer people what they really need, not just a one-size-fits-all, take it or leave it slice. But if I can learn to bake without gluten and butter, I think we can probably all get the hang of that. Cake obviously has health implications if you eat too much of it, but personally I think we can celebrate cake whilst remaining healthy. Overindulgence is a bad idea, but I doubt that one small sweet treat once a week will do anyone much harm. Eat healthily most of the time, move around the way you can, and an occasional cookie is unlikely to do you any harm, unless of course a doctor or someone with actual medical qualifications has said otherwise. Mostly, cake is joyful. It does not have to exist. It is not vegetables or protein, which we need for life. It exists purely to express creativity and to bring joy to others. In a world in which things are often a real struggle, cake is a bit of fun. In our worship and in our lives, we all need to just have a bit of fun now and then. And soon we will eat some cake within our service. But uh, first we will have our third hymn and then the offering and the notices. So now, before we continue eating, let us take a small break and first let me say a few words about cake. Uh, this is adapted from the Chocolate Communion by Sarah Modis Schur. Cake comes in many forms. Some of it is very sweet indeed. Some of us love the sweet hit of sugar, reminding us of our childhood love of cupcakes and birthday cake. Others find it far too much and say it sets their teeth on edge. Some cake is light and fluffy, melting in your mouth, and lingering for a brief moment before it vanishes. Some cake is dense and rich, a fruit cake too heavy for some, but much loved by others. Some cake is mildly sweet and subtle. Some people love the subtlety, whilst others yearn for the uncompromising thwack of chocolate we get from a brownie. That would be me. <laughs> Some cake is gluten-free, nut-free, halal, vegetarian or vegan. It meets the needs of those who eat it so that we can all join in. And then there are those of us who don't enjoy cake at all and are happiest with some crisps, a piece of fruit, an oat cake or a nice packet of nuts. There's no right or wrong cake, just many kinds. <coughs> so please, take your piece of cake, your biscuit, another nibble that works for you, look at it and hold it. Look at the colour. 
Smell the aroma. Is anything melting in your hand? Does your mouth water? Now take your cake, and rather than taking a large bite, just bite off a small bit, or break off a small bit and put it in your mouth, and let it sit there without chewing too much. Notice the taste, the sweetness. Notice any other flavours present in the cake. How do you feel when you eat the cake? Is this flavour associated with any memories? When you are ready, go ahead and finish the treat in any way you see fit. You can continue to nibble at the edges, or you can take a big bite, or something in between. Which did you choose? <laughs> when the cake is all gone, how do you feel? Yes, life is like choosing some cake, involving some joy and some risk. Life and cake can bring you joy, but can also be a bit messy. Different people have different tastes and different desires. But know that your life is honoured here. All of us together are different natures because we are different people. But all of us are honoured here and welcome as we grow in compassionate and loving community. And as soon as everyone has finished nibbling their cake, we will have our final hymn. And this is hymn number 36 for everyone born. But let us just take a few seconds so that everybody can put down their cake and finish nibbling. <clears throat> I've put out the physical flame of our chalice, but its might remains with us until we are able to gather once more. And now some final words. Be true, be well, be loving, by Cynthia Landrum. We leave this gathered community, but we don't leave our connection, our concerns, our care <coughs> for each other, our service to each other, to the world, and to our faith continues. Until we are together again, friends, be true, be well, be strong, be loving. May it be so. Amen. Amen. Amen.